welcome once again. Thank you so much for joining me. This is the fourth take of our series, Parenting in Our Times. And it's been a pleasure presenting it to date. This is going to be the last of the series. And what we're going to be doing today is just praying. Praying about the things that we talked about in the last three series. It's very important that we don't just hear, but that we also take to God the things that we've heard. Make sense of it in prayer. So that the fear, you know that constant fear that we have about what we're doing and what we're not doing, all right? The constant fear that we experience, God takes that away from us so that we're able to be confident parents as we parent our children, all right? And remember that I've said that we have three sets of parents. We have those well, children. We have children who are little, zero to 10. They're in, that year, in those years where you are trying to tell them what to do and how to roll. And then we have the teenagers where we are reinforcing the things that we have said. All right, as they go out and play, and even, even the younger ones, the things that you have said to them will be challenged. They will come back home to tell you they've been challenged, and then you have to keep reiterating the things you have said, you know, and insisting so that they can understand that it's for real and, and imbibe. All right, and then we now have the young adults. We have parents amongst us like me, who all our children are young adults, and we have our concerns about our kids. They might not have ended up in the wrong place, but they have futures ahead of them that we are concerned about. Some of us have daughters who are old enough to be married, sons who are old enough to be married. We are not, you know, even talking about it, you know. So we have things that we are concerned about. So today we're just going to pray about these things. We we'll trust God that all will be well with our children. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so, Father, at this time, we just want to thank you for the series that we have heard so far. I want to thank you in particular for the families of Holy Trinity Lagos, all the families. I want to thank you because, Lord, you have been faithful and true, and you have been good to us. Lord God Almighty, this Lord, this at this time, we just lift up our, our families. I lift up every family in church here of Holy Trinity Lagos. I lift them up before you, and I ask that you, by your Spirit, will begin to establish your will concerning them. The Word of God says to the husbands, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. The Word of God says to the wives, Wives, submit to your husbands as the church is submitted to Christ. Lord God Almighty, I lift them both up and I ask that you, by your Spirit, will cause these marriages to thrive in the name of Jesus. Lord God, that they may bring off that they may bring offspring that brings you glory in the name of Jesus. Lord, I, I speak life to every marriage. I ask, oh God, that you strengthen the marriages, oh God. Strengthen the covenants that they have, oh God. Give them an understanding that they are in covenants and not in contracts, oh God. Give them commitment to their relationships, oh God. Father, let no man take for granted his spouse. Let no woman take for granted her spouse in the name of Jesus. Father, between the two of them, let them make the effort. Let them put in the effort that it takes for them to have thriving marriages. That their children may thrive in these families and in these homes in the name of Jesus. Lord, because we recognize that children thrive in the love of their parents, we are asking for these marriages to thrive. We don't want husbands and wives who are just living together and barely tolerating each other. We want husbands and wives who indeed care and love for each other, who are submitted to each other in humility, who serve each other, who look out for each other, who are concerned about each other, and who are constantly, constantly making the effort to improve their relationships and strengthen their relationships. That's what we are asking for, Lord, in every couple and every marriage in still in the name of Jesus. We thank you because these marriages will bring glory to you your name. These marriages will cause people to look at you and ask questions about Jesus in the name of Jesus. These marriages at the end of the day will bring forth good seed. Father God, in the name of Jesus, because they obey you, Lord, you will honor them. You will bring glory to them. You will prosper them. You will cause the men to be to be favored because of the wives that they have. And you will cause the women, oh God, to be like full vines around the table. In the name of Jesus, the word of God talks about children being, you know, a heritage of the Lord and the fruit of the womb is his reward. Lord, indeed, because the marriages are thriving, the children will be you know, like olive plants right around the table. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for these marriages, oh God, and we declare that even marriages that are ailing in our midst, Lord God, we just begin to speak life. We ask for change of hearts. For that hardness of hearts, we ask for softening of those hearts in the name of Jesus. Every marriage that is struggling, Lord, right now, we speak the life of God. We ask that people will change their minds, oh God. People will allow you to soften their hearts towards each other. Lord, we ask that people will forgive each other. 
people will decide to start again to try again not to give up on what you have given them lord god in the name of jesus we thank you for every such marriage and we thank you because testimonies in our midst will abound to marriages that are struggling becoming stronger and better where children are thriving in the matchless name of jesus father we also thank you father for the parents in our midst we thank you because lord you by your spirit are the ones that teaches people to parent the bible says we have the holy spirit he will teach us all things he will guide us into all truth and so at this time i just lift up the fathers i ask for the courage to be fathers i ask for the strength to be fathers i ask for the understanding to be fathers i ask for the wisdom to be fathers i ask oh god that you enable them oh god to be the fathers that they are supposed to be who teach their children the way of the lord and when they are old the bible says they will not depart from it in the name of jesus i ask for fathers who are involved i ask for fathers who are providers I ask for fathers who show themselves as priests and prophets of their home i ask for fathers who rise up to be numbered amongst the fathers who do it God's way in the name of Jesus I ask for fathers to validate and affirm their children I ask for fathers to be by their children to stand by their children to provide direction and 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 direction for their kids to be able to show their children how to come to be role models that their children want to emulate in the name of Jesus father I thank you I bless you for every father in the house I thank you for even fathers that recognize that they are making mistakes that there is grace to turn around there is the wisdom to turn around and do things differently to understand that we must seek first the kingdom of God and its righteousness then everything else shall be added unto us parenting is a godly given role it's a god given role all. It's not something we can we should treat lightly, Lord. Help us to understand how important it is, oh God, that the ones that have been given to us, oh God, have come to us with mandates on them, and that we have the responsibility to, to cause these children to walk the will of God for their lives in the name of Jesus. Lord, let us put aside our own personal agendas. Let us put our own personal desires. Let's just ensure that the will of God is established in every child in the name of Jesus. Father, I lift up the mothers as they support the fathers in this journey of parenting i ask for grace oh god i ask for grace for every mother in the house i know that there are more mothers in the house who are coping without the fathers than they are that their fathers coping without the mothers so father i lift up every mother i ask for strength i ask for boldness i ask for resilience i ask for patience i ask for the love of god to be flooded in their hearts to love their children and love their families lord god in the name of jesus father where there is no father lord i ask for grace to be both for such women in the name of Jesus ask for grace to be both for such women in the name of Jesus I release that grace this afternoon at this time in the name of Jesus and ask that you by your spirits will take control have your way in these families in the name of Jesus I'm asking that there be agreements agreements between the mothers and the fathers of these children mothers have a way of having dreams that fathers don't understand fathers have a way of having dreams that mothers don't understand let there be alignments lord let there be agreements the bible says behold it is beautiful to see people the families working together in unity then then there's a flow of the anointing of the goodness of god in such families all the way down to the children lord i'm asking for alignment i'm asking for agreement I'm asking for alignment. I'm asking for agreement concerning parenting. I'm asking for agreement concerning parenting. I'm asking for alignment concerning parenting in the name of Jesus. As they agree and do what they have agreed, Lord, the children will be free in the name of Jesus. I thank you at this time for the children. I thank you for the little ones. Those ones that we're still teaching how to, you know, the, what the word of God says. The ones that we teach in junior church. Lord, let it be that what we do in junior church is to reiter- reiterate and emphasize the things that parents have already done at war in the name of Jesus. As we speak this word, the Bible says that which children should come to you. You have something about children. You even said that our hearts should be like hearts of children. They are trusting. They believe. Lord, let them indeed trust. Let them indeed believe. Let them be raised as children. Let them be children indeed in your care in the name of Jesus. As they hear the word of God, let their soft hearts begin to absorb it all. Absorb it all, Father. Absorb it all. That Lord God, that that becomes their belief system and their belief structure. Lord God, in the name of Jesus. It's called indoctrination. As we teach them about you, Lord, let the word of God that is in their hearts stay. 
Lord God, let nothing steal it from them. Let the circumstances of life not steal that word from them in their young ages. Lord God, let them begin to know God from the young age in the name of Jesus. Let them have experiences of you that make it obvious that you are real in the name of Jesus. Lord God, I thank you because as the parents provide environments where you can where you can have your way, where you can serve, Lord, these things become possible for these young ones in the name of Jesus. And lift up the teenagers. I know that if you do it right with them when they are before 10, by the time they are teenagers, they would have invited it and they would have received it. But Lord, every question I ask that you give them an answer. Every question will give them an answer. Lord God, every doubt in their hearts, Father, he raised by your truth. Let your truth be their life in the name of Jesus. Let them see you in ways that only you can show yourself to them in the name of Jesus. Let there be no doubt in their heart that the things that their parents have said to them are true in the name of Jesus. Lord, this can only happen by reason of their own experiences with you. As they pray, Lord, answer. Show forth. Lord, show forth. Be strong on their behalf. Show forth for them. When they pray, listen them. I thank you, Father God, for our older children. I thank you for their, they have been through school. They've done all that they need to do. And now they're in that place where they're chasing careers. Father, the ones that are married to age, I lift them up to your throne of mercy. And it's both the boys and the girls. I'm asking that you lead them and guide them to partners, to, to spouses that will bless them in the name of Jesus. I'm asking for prosperity in their careers and in their businesses of choice in the name of Jesus. I'm asking for your favor to rest upon them, that as they navigate life for God, life will treat them well in the name of Jesus. That because they are the seed of the righteous, they will not know shame in the name of Jesus. And that you meet them, they will have no need in the name of Jesus, that you will not meet in the matchless name of Jesus. Father God, let them not allow themselves to be distracted by the things that are going on in our world. Let them be focused on you as their Lord and as their God. And as they focus on you, Lord, I know that you will make ways for them in the matchless name of Jesus. I I thank you for those that are believing God for children in our midst. Father God, I lift these ones up to your throne of mercy and grace. The Bible says there shall be none barren in the land. In our in our midst, HL, even HOF wide, there will be none barren in the land. As they desire children, we will be opened in this season to receive these children and bring them forth in the name of Jesus. We declare that no one will want a child. Everyone who desires child, a child will have that child. Boys and girls, healthy, whole children that will come to your glory in the matchless name of Jesus. Finally, I lift up parents whose children have gone astray and they are wondering, what did I do wrong? First, I ask that you by your spirit will take away that, that hopelessness from them course you're going to be established in their lives that they are they have done their bit the rest they can leave it to okay no child that has gone astray will not turn back the bible says the prodigal son he came to an understanding of himself and he went back home by himself all his father did was to wait for him to come in and so father as we wait for our children they will turn back all the ones that are taken with drugs immorality whatever it is father we call our children back home in the name of Jesus, we declare that everyone that the enemy has taken, ah, my Lord, they will really will release them because they don't belong to Him. In the name of Jesus, we establish the will of God for this one that they will be restored fully to the glory of God. That even their time of of what seems like strain, oh God, will become a reason for them to speak the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, they will become examples that people will look up and say, if my child, if this child can come through, my child will come through. In the name of Jesus, they will become episodes read of all men. In the name of Jesus, Father, these are the things that I ask concerning our families, concerning our children. Lord, I ask that you take away the fear. Take away the fear. There is no need for us to be afraid. There is no need for us to be afraid because we have committed these children to you. And because they'll be committed to you, Lord, they'll be fine. All of them will go with, all of them will excel. All of them will bring glory to your name. All of them will fulfill their destinies. Father, in the matchless name of Jesus, to the joy of all our parents, in Jesus' matchless name. Amen. I say a big amen to all the prayers. And I know that after listening to the series, whatever challenges, whatever you know concerns you have in your heart, just find where they can be fit into the series. And I'm sure that you will find solution to any challenges you have with your children in the name of Jesus. At this time, I just want to say that everything I've said, most of what I've said is actually um, in my book series. And there's one in particular that talks about parenting. Let me bring it out. Okay. Parenting, parenting as God intended. That's it. Parenting as God intended. 
written with the same fervor and passion with which I talked about it. It is found in the pages of this book. And this book doesn't only just tell you what to do, it also gives you exercises to be able to test yourself, to be able to be sure that what you're doing is the right thing. These books are available at Bible Wonderland or Surinary. Okay, if you go there, you'll find them. And you know, when now it's here together, just ask for them and I'll get a copy out to you. All right, the truth is that nothing just happens. We have to be intentional about the things that we're doing in our families, in our marriages, with our children. Because if there is one place that is under attack right now, it's the family unit. All the chaos in the world that you're seeing is a function of family that has failed. All the chaos in Nigeria, family is failing. In yeah. other parts of the world, family is failing. And once the family fails, the children are subject to just about anything. So if we do right by our families, by God in our families, we will have the good results that we all desire. But it takes work. And I want to encourage every parent, every daddy, every mommy in the house to take on, you know, bring up your sleeves and get into the grind of parenting. Especially if your children are still young. If they are older, you can still find your way back. But it's easier when they're young. So I just want to encourage you, especially the new dads amongst us, <clears throat> hold up your sleeves and get into the flow of it. You will enjoy every minute of discovering your children. And as you discover them, you will know where to put in your castle, where God needs to step in and take control. And then you will pray for your children as they go along. Of course, praying for your children is very critical. You can't do all this that I've said without praying for yourself and for the children. So I encourage you to also pray. Spend time praying for these children and I'm sure that they will all be fine. Thank you so much for joining me for this series, Parenting in Our Times. I believe God that they will be a blessing to you. And I'll see you again sometime again. Bye. Thank you.